As a coach, I always prided myself being good with the athletes. As head track and field coach for the University of South Florida, Greg Phil coached 17 All-Americans. He helped two of them achieve their dream of competing in the Olympic Games. I spent almost every waking hour working, traveling, going everywhere to do whatever I could be to successful and to help our athletes be successful at that level. In the early days of his coaching career, Greg was a great mentor, at least during work hours. At night, he was anything but a role model. On weekends and even on away trips and things like that, uh, there was another side of me. I'd like to I'd like to go to bars, would specifically go to strip bars. My philosophy back then was if I'm going to go to a bar, I might as well look at women naked. The dollhouse was one of his regular hangouts. There was a girl there that caught my eye that was very attractive and through my roommate found out that she was kind of interested in me. The two got together for a one night stand. That night of passion led to a shocking phone call. She told me that she was pregnant and that uh, she wanted to not only have the baby but that I was the father. And I got pretty angry with that figuring that I wasn't probably the only guy that she had been with. Her name was Chris and she told Greg that he was the only man she had been with during that time. He tried to force her to abort the child but she wasn't backing down. Got very angry with her that she was going to have the kid and uh, actually left the restaurant and had kind of washed my hands of the whole deal. And a couple days later, we gave it some more thought and going in the dollhouse again and seeing her and seeing how attractive she was. And I started talking to her more and I said, you know what, if this is something you're dead set on, then, then I want to be a part of it. I don't want to uh, just be some stranger to it. Why don't you move in with me? I'm not going to marry you. I have no promises that I can make to you, but uh, at least I can tell you that I'm going to give it a try. With the birth of their baby girl, Greg and Chris went from being strangers to friends. It was great. She was, uh, she was a buddy. She was a drinking buddy. I mean, we just, we partied. Uh, the baby really didn't affect a tremendous amount of our life at first. I would bring one of my athletes over to watch the kid, and then I'd see Chris at the bar and, and do everything I wanted to do. The arrangement worked out so well that Greg and Chris eventually married. With her family in mind, Chris quit her job at the strip club and started cleaning houses. All the while, Greg continued to pour himself into his coaching career. Track and field was my life. I sacrificed family, time, friends, everything. I was absorbed in it, and uh, it was my God. While Greg was away at track meets, Chris made new friends who inspired her to become a Christian. But her new faith soon created tension at home. She started pushing me to want to go to church with her, and. Uh, she actually started reading the Bible during the week and, and things, there were some red flags going off with me with this. She wasn't interested in drinking anymore. Um, she wasn't as gung-ho of me going out to the bars as much. Uh, and every once in a while she would say things like, you know, I've been talking to God, which really bothered me. Greg was convinced that she had joined a cult. So after four years of marriage, he was ready for a divorce. She. Uh, clearly had gone off the top you know, over the deep end as far as uh, she I thought she had just lost her mind early one morning Chris dreamed that Greg would have an encounter with God she even had a date March 14th I didn't tell him for a long time and then as March 14th approached I went ahead and told him that the Lord was going to reveal himself to him she would hand me an envelope and had told me that there was a Bible verse in the envelope uh, but not to open it, you'd know when to open it, and that uh, she loved me and then remind me that I was going to see God on March 14th. Greg was heading out of town for a national competition, but nothing could have prepared him for what he experienced in his hotel. And I remember laying there and looking over and uh, over to the right side towards the door, the, I just noticed that the, the hotel room looked darker than usual. There was a paralyzing fear in the room, and I really thought I was losing my mind. I knew what whatever was in this room was evil, evil beyond evil. And I remember laying there and looking over at that and reflecting my life. And I remember just putting my hand up and saying, God, I don't, I don't want to be this person that I was anymore. I want to be a good person. And immediately that darkness went away. And uh, I just remember crying so hard. Greg found the envelope that his wife had given him. Inside, she had written Jeremiah 29, 11. The verse says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, to, to prosper and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. 
And then this is the part that really got me. And that you will come to me and you'll pray to me and I will hear you. And you'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And I said, God, I just want to know you. I want to be a part of you. I want you in my life. I really didn't understand what happened to me. Um, but I just knew whatever it was, was a better feeling than the cocaine I dabbled in, the alcohol, the sex, the motorcycles, the fame. It was a feeling, it was a euphoric feeling, it was, it was addictive feeling, I, I, I can't even describe. The couple that started as a one night stand now has Christ as the foundation for their home. It's, it's amazing that we're together, absolutely amazing. And it's clearly just God that, that, that did that whole thing. Our relationship has changed dramatically. We can pray together, we can um, worship together. We now actually really love each other. Greg resigned from his coaching position at South Florida to spend more time with his family. Now he coaches his daughter, Logan, at a Christian high school. I'm, I'm really proud of my dad and the changes that he's made and how God has just influenced his life. It's really changed my life and my family's life. I don't know that I'll ever get over that amazement that God, the God of this universe, you know, stepped out and, and drew me to himself. I'm a better husband, a better father, a better person. I'm more fulfilled. I have nothing, but yet I have everything. And that, that everything that you're chasing and everything that the world tells you is of value is worth nothing. At the end of the day, there's nothing greater than serving Jesus Christ.